welcome one and all to Dreadful Frights at the Backlot Perth, presented by Perth Horror Fans. I'm your host, Stoxy the Salacious Spectre. We begin tonight by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, the Wajak people of the Noongar Nation, and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging leaders. Tonight's feature presentation is The Ghost in the Invisible Bikini. This 1966 American fantasy horror comedy musical is the seventh and final film in the American International Pictures Beach Party Films. Originally titled Pajama Party in a Haunted House. The film was first announced in January of 1965, but the title was soon changed to The Girl in the Glass Bikini during development and was even promoted under that name during the end credits of 1965's Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machine, which was a spy spoof loosely affiliated with the Beach Party franchise. However, during filming, the title was changed again to Bikini Party in a Haunted House. Written by Lewis M. Hayward, the movie was originally going to star Annette Funicello and Frankie Avalon and was to be directed by William Asher. However, in June of 1965, Don Wise was announced to direct and both Funicello and Avalon never appeared in the final film, as Funicello wanted to spend more time with her family and Avalon wanted to appear in more serious roles, making this the only film in the series to not feature either of them. Beach Party regulars Jodie McCree, Harvey Lembeck and John Ashley were also originally announced to appear, with Buster Keaton signing on to reprise his role as a comic Indian, which was the term used at the time. However, Keaton tragically had to bow out due to illness and passed away in February of the following year. His role was given to Benny Rubin, but both Ashley and McCree did not appear in the final film, with the lead male roles being played by Tommy Kirk and Aaron Kincaid, who starred alongside Deborah Wally. Kincaid, who was forced to participate in the film due to his long-term contract with the American International Pictures, was supposed to perform two musical numbers. However, these scenes were dropped. Ever the recyclers, the American International Pictures used one of Eric Von Zipper's stunt scenes in the 1976 film The Born Losers, which was the first in the Billy Jack film series, and some footage of this film also appeared in the 2010 documentary American Grindhouse. When the original cut was finalised, James H. Nicholson and Samuel Z. Arkoff of the American International Pictures were not happy with what they saw and ordered reshoots several weeks after the completion of principal photography, including the addition of a whole new plot which added Boris Karloff and Susan Hart to the cast and the film was finally retitled yet again to The Ghost in the Invisible Bikini. Hart shot her scenes for two weeks on her own wearing a blonde wig and a black velvet bathing suit shot against a black velvet backdrop. Then for one additional week with Karloff 
whose scenes were all filmed in a one-room mausoleum set on a separate soundstage, who is clearly standing in a bottomless coffin rather than sitting up in it, which was a necessity as he was suffering terribly from chronic back problems with one of his legs in a brace. Neither Hart or Karloff worked with any members of the original cast as their scenes were directed and edited into the existing footage by Ronald Ronnie Sinclair. The music was composed by Les Baxter and Albert Harris, with Al Sims acting as musical supervisor, and the songs were written by Guy Hemrick and Jerry Steiner. The film also boasts appearances by the likes of Nancy Sinatra, Quinn O'Hara, the Bobby Fuller Four, Claudia Martin, Patsy Keller, Basil Rathbone, Piccola Pupa in her debut role, and was reported to be Francis X. Bushman's 435th film. And now, The Ghost in the invisible bikini.